Okay, let's go ahead and go over the warm-up real quickly. Um, for here, we had the problem was 21 minus 24 and 7 eighths, and we have it broken down into various steps. We wanted to know, going from step two to step three, what property listed here is showcased by step three, what we went to. Um, so is this the commutative property? Is it the associative property, the distributive property? Subtracting a number is the same as adding its inverse, so like an additive inverse property, or the opposite of the sum is the sum of the opposites. Which step is being showcased here? The associative property. Good. So remember, associative property means that your grouping is going to change. It's easy to remember that. When you associate yourself with somebody, you're grouping yourself with them. Okay, so when you think of associative, think of grouping. The grouping is what's changing. So grouping changes. That means that our what was originally inside is a little bit different than what was uh, inside previously. So here, we used to have the 21 on the outside and the negative 24 on the inside. Now we're regrouping it so that they're both together on the inside. And instead of saying plus negative 24, we've changed it to a minus 24. So we also have kind of done a subtracting a number is the same as its additive inverse, like right, adding its inverse. We've kind of done both of these steps by changing addition back into subtraction. So instead of adding a negative, we're just subtracting. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the second problem. With the second problem, it says Jessica's friend lent $5, and later that day she gave her friend back a dollar, and, or you know, one and three-fourths dollars, which is basically $1.75. So the problem is set up as negative five minus negative one and three-fourths. So that's how they're setting the problem up. They want to know which one of them is correctly working through that setup. So did Mar uh, Mariah correctly continue the process or did Shane correctly continue the process? So if you notice, it's a subtraction of a negative. Mariah says that she's now going to change the whole number to a positive, but she's going to leave the fraction as a minus or a negative. Shane says that he's going to change the entire mixed number to a positive. Who's correct? Shane, right? If you are breaking this down, the negative 1 and 3 fourths, if we change that minus negative 1 and 3 fourths to a positive, then it should be a positive throughout the whole thing. 1 minus 3 fourths is just going to give you 1 fourth instead of 1 and 3 fourths. So you want to make sure that when you are working through that, you're changing the entire mixed number, whole number and fraction together. Okay, so Shane is actually the one that is the correct process. Let's go ahead and finish the process off. So he has broken the fraction apart. Okay, instead of one and three-fourths, he's breaking apart as one plus three-fourths. What can he do now? Now that he's broken that fraction up, what can he now do? Like, what's the purpose? Why did he go ahead and break that fraction apart? What do you think? You're looking at me. What do you think? Very good. Negative 5 can be grouped together with that plus 1 because they're both integer values. The fraction's a rational number. Rational numbers and integers, sometimes they might not be as easy to combine together. So we break it apart so that both of these, that you know, we're taking the whole number portion away from the fraction so that we're dealing with just the integer operations. So we have negative 5 plus 1. That's our associative property taking place again. We're regrouping it in a different manner. And then we've got this plus 3 fourths on the outside. Okay, so negative 5 plus 1 is going to come out to what? Negative 4. Negative 4. So now we have a negative 4 plus positive 3 fourths. So can I put those together? Can I put negative 4 and a 3 fourths together? 
No, because one of them's negative and the other one is positive. So I can't just put negative four and three fourths together. That's not going to be the correct answer. So instead, it's like you are subtracting away from it. We're subtracting something away. So I know that if I'm subtracting it away, I can break this negative four up into a negative three and a negative one. And then I can add the three-fourths to just this negative one. Because it's easier to take it away from one whole. If I take one whole and remove the three-fourths away from it, what am I left with? One-fourth. Is it going to be a positive one-fourth or a negative one-fourth? Negative. Right? We had more negative. The whole was a negative. We're going to have more of that negative remaining. So that becomes negative three minus the one-fourth, now we can combine that together. Now we can piece those together because they are of the same sign. This becomes negative three and one-fourth as our final answer. Okay. All right, when you've got that copy down, let's go ahead and flip it on over to the next page. I was better today with my copies. It is front and back this time. Alright, so we're just reviewing real quickly over our integer rules. Our learning target for today, I can add and subtract integers using rules, counters, and number lines. You are going to have to utilize number lines and counters modeling what integer addition and subtraction looks like. So before we go on, I'm just going to do a quick review over the rules. You guys get to use calculators this time. You don't have to worry about there being a no calculator section on any of your tests this year. You will always get the use of a calculator. So the rules are good to know. They're good to have in the back of your head. But if at any point you kind of get confused, you have a calculator to use as a backup to make sure that you are getting the correct answer. But here's our integer rules. Remember that if you are adding integers, if you are adding integers, boys, if you are adding integers, you are going to keep the signs and add them together. So same signs, you will add and keep those signs together. So for example, if we've got negative 2 plus negative 6. These are both negative. I'm just going to put neg. I don't really want to write the whole thing out. They're both negative. That means we're going to keep the sign as negative, and we're just going to add the base together, 2 plus 6, and that's going to come out to negative 8. You knew this already from positive numbers. You add positive numbers all the time. So when they're both positive, you're keeping the sign, which was positive, and then just adding the two base numbers together, 3 plus 4, which is 7. That comes out to a positive 7. So when they're same signs, you are adding the two base numbers together and keeping the sign. When they're different signs, you have to actually subtract. Subtract in the order that you're used to. Whatever your highest number is minus your lowest number. But you keep the sign of your larger base. Whatever number was your larger base value, that's the sign you're going to keep. So kind of think of it as a point system. Do you have more negative or more positive? If it's like a game, the more you have, that's the one that wins. So if you've got more negative, negative wins out, that's the answer's sign. If you have more positive, positive wins out, that's the answer sign. So for here, we have negative 4 plus 7. We're going to follow this rule. Negative 4 plus 7, we are going to subtract in the normal manner that we're used to, 7 minus 4. The 7 is the higher number, and 7 in this case happens to be a positive number. So that means that our answer is going to be a positive answer. And when we subtract 7 and 4, we get 3. So it's a positive 3 for our answer. 
for the second problem, negative 8 plus 2. Again, we're just subtracting the bases. We're going to subtract 8 and 2. 8 is our larger base, and that base happens to be negative. Since that base is negative, our answer is going to be negative. And 8 minus 2 gives us 6, so negative 6. Okay, so once again, if they are the same signs, you just add the bases together and keep the sign. If they are different signs, you subtract them in your normal manner, highest minus lowest. And whatever sign your higher base is, is the sign of your answer. When you are subtracting, we do not subtract when it comes to integers. We always change it to addition. That's your additive inverse. You are going to add the opposite. So we follow it in the process of keep, change, and change. We keep the first number just as it is. We change our operation into addition. And then we change our second value into the opposite value. Keep, change, and change. So for here, we have negative 15 minus 2. I'm going to go ahead and split up my problem into three sections. So I've got negative 15, I've got the minus sign, and then I've got the 2. I'm just drawing my lines down to create these three separate sections. And then following my pattern of what I need to do. The first thing I need to do is keep my negative 15. My negative 15 is going to stay negative 15. I'm going to change my subtraction into addition. Okay. Sure. And then I'm going to change the positive 2 into its opposite, which is a negative 2. That's okay. Let me zoom in so you guys can see it a little easier. Whenever you're struggling to see something, let me know, and I'll zoom in. Okay, so now we're just going to follow the rules of addition. Are these same signs or different signs? Same. So they're same signs, so all we're going to do is add the bases and keep the signs. So that comes out to negative 17 as the final answer. Once we've changed it into addition, we follow our rules for addition. Same signs, you keep the sign, add the base numbers together. Different signs, you subtract them, keep the sign of the larger. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Again, I'm going to split it up into its parts. I've got negative 5 minus negative 4. Negative 5 minus negative 4. We're going to keep the first number as is. That becomes a negative 5. We're going to change subtraction into addition. And we're going to change our second number into its opposite, which is a positive 4. So we now have an addition problem, negative 5 plus 4. Are these same signs or different? Different, right? These are different signs. Because they're different signs, we have to follow our rule for different signs. We subtract and we keep the sign of the larger base. So if we subtract and keep the sign of the larger base, what is the answer going to be? Negative 1. Good. What you're going to do right now is you are going to go through without using your calculator. Do not use your calculator. I want you to go through problems one through six. You're going to identify whether the process is going to be an addition process or subtraction process. If it's subtraction, you're going to convert it first to addition. Then you're going to identify whether it's same sign or different signs and what the rule would be. And then what's your final answer? You are doing this without the use of the calculator. I want to make sure you understand the rules before we go on. 
answers would be. Okay, so for problem number one, negative seven plus two, this is an addition of different signs, so we are subtracting and keeping the sign of the larger number. So you should have gotten negative five as your answer. For problem number two, these are the same signs of addition, so you are actually going to keep your sign as negative nine. For problem number three, you are going to have to keep, change, and flip. So, or not flip, sorry, keep change and change. So this addition sign is now going to happen. And the second value is going to become a positive as well. So it really becomes 8 plus a positive 4. And 8 plus a positive 4 is going to come out to 12. Okay, for problem number four, you have negative nine minus the two. You're going to keep the negative nine. You're going to change the subtraction into addition, and then you're going to change the two into a negative two. So I'm going to put a negative sign right above it. These are now same signs, so we can go ahead and add them and keep, right? It becomes negative nine plus a negative two. Add and keep the sign, and we get negative 11. For problem number five, these are same signs. Same signs, we can go ahead and add them and keep together. So we can keep those signs as a negative and it becomes a negative 14. And then for problem number six, they are subtractions. So we're going to go ahead and keep the seven, change this into an addition problem, change the 15 into the opposite, which is a negative 15. This now becomes seven plus negative 15. You would add and keep the sign of the larger number, or sorry, subtract and keep the sign of the larger number that becomes negative eight. So there's our following answers. Okay, go ahead and flip it on over to the next page. Looking at contextual problems. Contextual means it's within a context of a word problem. So for contextual problems, we need to identify several things. We need to identify operations that are being utilized. We also need to identify whether we're dealing with positive or negative um, integers. So Mount Everest is 29,028 feet above sea level. The Dead Sea is 1,312 feet below sea level. We want to know the difference between the two elevations. So difference, that word right there is an operation. Guys, what operation is difference? Subtraction. Say it louder. Subtraction. Subtraction. So we are going to be subtracting here. Actually, I'm going to use my... This is going to become a subtraction problem. So I'm going to go ahead and write a subtraction problem where I am subtracting whatever the value is for Everest. and whatever value it is for the Dead Sea. So we are taking whatever Mount Everest's value is and subtracting the Dead Sea's value. Now, Mount Everest. Mount Everest is 29,028 feet above sea level. Is that positive or negative? Positive, positive right? The word above. Above means that it is going to be a positive value. So we know that we're dealing with 29,028. Then we're going to go ahead and subtract the value for the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is 1,312 feet below sea level. Is that positive or negative? negative? Negative, right? That keyword below means that it is going to be a negative. So we're going to be subtracting a negative 1,312. Here's where the biggest mistake comes into play. A lot of people think that they're just going to do 29,028 minus 1,312. But you're not subtracting a positive, you're subtracting a negative. What do we do when we are subtracting? We keep the first number. We change subtraction into addition. And then we change our second number to the opposite. What is the opposite of a negative? Positive. positive. So it becomes 1,312. So we're actually adding. Even though this was a difference problem, we are eventually adding because of the fact that we're keeping, or I'm sorry, the fact that we are doing our additive inverse. So when we add those two values together, we're going to get a final answer of 30,000. 
340 feet. So that's how far apart the two elevations are. So if you go to the highest part of Mount Everest to the lowest part of the Dead Sea, that's the difference between the values. Okay, go ahead and do problem number two on your own. Identify operations and identify integers and then perform the, the, the problem. All right, let's go over it. In Denver, the temperature in the morning was negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit. By the afternoon, the temperature rose 12 degrees. We want to know what the temperature is. Okay, so we are dealing with two different integers. We've got a negative integer that we are starting off with, right? This negative 18. And then we are dealing with a positive integer with the 12 degrees. So we know that we're dealing with a positive 12 here. What operation are we going to perform? Addition. Addition, right? The operation shh, that's represented by the word rows means that we are going to add. So we are performing addition here. So we have negative 18 plus 12. Negative 18 plus 12, what is that going to come out to? Negative 6. Negative six. Okay. All right. Using addition for counters and number lines. Counters and number lines. Huh? So whenever, remember my reminder to you guys, if you are working a problem out on your own independently, I expect you to use pencil because you can erase pencil if you made a mistake. You can't erase highlighters. So when I'm asking you to do it independently, you do it with pencil. If you want to go back over it with color later, that's up to you. Okay. All right. Addition with counters and number lines. So we're only going to have time to do these three problems probably um, using our counters. So with counters, it's a great way to be able to model or visually see how addition and subtraction works, how those zero pairs are going to work as well. Remember we talked about zero pairs. Who can remind us from yesterday? So raise your hand if you can remind us yesterday. What does it mean to be a zero pair. When I say zero pair, what does that mean? Elijah? I was not give word, but is it when um, two numbers added together make zero? Very good. Two numbers that added together are going to make zero. Okay, so when you have a positive and it's negative counterpart or it's opposite integer, when you combine them together, it would create a value that is zero. Okay, even though in problem number one, we have more negative values than we do positives, we actually have a set of zero pairs here. So when we're taking a look, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to let my negatives be my pink. If you don't have pink, you can use red. I'm going to let green represent my positives. <laughs> Elijah. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to write out what the sentence or the statement is to model. So we know that we're dealing with a negative 8 because if I count my negatives, I have 8 negatives. I know that I am modeling an addition problem. So I'm taking negative 8 and I'm adding how many positives? How many positives are located here? 6. So we have negative 8 plus 6. That's the statement that's being modeled here. When we are working this out, we can identify a cluster of zero pairs, meaning that for every negative, if there is a positive, it can zero pair out. So I can cross it off. All of these can be crossed off. How many zero pairs do I have? How many zero pairs do I have? Six. I have six zero pairs that can go ahead and get canceled out. What's remaining is the stuff that was not able to be zeroed out. What is remaining? Two. Two what? Negatives. negatives. Two negatives or negative two. So when we're modeling this, this is the numerical statement and its value. I want you to write down what is the numerical statement, 
how many zero pairs does it create? And what are you remaining with for your final answer? Do that for problem two and three. Let's take a look for here for problem number two. What's the first number that I'm going to write down? Negative four. Right, there's four negatives. I'm going to write negative four. I know that this is an addition problem. What am I adding to it? Seven, right? Positive seven. Okay. How many zero pairs are there? There are four of them. If I take these four zero pairs here, I have four zero pairs. Okay, what am I remaining with for my answer? Three. three. Positive three. Okay, let's take a look at problem number three. What's the first number in my addition statement? Negative five. That first column has five negatives. So we have negative five. We are adding our second column. What, how many, like what's the numerical value for our second column? Negative two. Okay, zero pairs. How many zero pairs? Zero. zero. We don't have any zero pairs. There are no zero pairs here. So that means nothing can get canceled out. So what's our final statement? Negative seven. Nothing can get canceled out, so you have seven negatives remaining. Okay, we're going to stop here.